<laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's your girl, Miracle Sims, and you're listening to God, Sex, and Love, your daily dose of inspiration, the juice. It is August the 30th, 2024, and today the topic is sugar-coated. <laughs> um, those that are watching me live, y'all may see this sugar scrub falling from my lips. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to see, can I show y'all what sugar-coated look like? Um, yeah, man, y'all know that yesterday was my birthday, right? Yes, 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 and it was awesome <laughs> overall. The sugar scrub actually tastes really good. Um, <laughs> it's actually one that I was testing out as a future juice product because y'all know I got juice glosses, right? Well, I was testing out a sugar scrub situation. And I've been testing it out for a, while, for a while now, but it just happened to come in handy with today's conversation. So I took a photo with the, <laughs> the sugar scrub really heavy on my um, lip and uh, or lips. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, now I'm just like eating it and and, and just getting it from, from falling all around. But anyway, um, yeah, my birthday was really nice yesterday, actually, y'all. Um, you know, the only thing that I knew was going to happen was that I was going to go to work. And I knew that I was going to come back home and be NJ's learning coach. Well, uh, quite a bit of other things was happening as well. Shout out to my Mountain West family because they came through for your girl, man. Um, they had me a nice, I called it a blessing basket. Um of a lot of my favorite things in a nice little basket. Um, the staff had all signed a card. Um, so it was nice, like, reading everybody's, you know, sentiments and things of that nature. Um, and then outside of that, one of the ladies that I um, work with closely, um, she comes in every now and then on Thursdays to volunteer. And um, she ended up bringing me flowers and a card as well as some homemade cupcakes so your girl was just showered with gifts and love yesterday from my mountain west church family so shout out to them each and every one of the people that acknowledged and decided to celebrate me in any way i greatly 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 appreciate it um, my basket had quite a few nice little things it was like candy cookies juices um my favorite chips like you know just yeah so it was nice um, I think the biggest thing was like some pajamas, a cute necklace that said mama. Like it just was really nice. Um, and then on top of that, I mean, y'all were showing out online as well. So shout out to each and every person that decided to show love on my social media yesterday um, and acknowledge my birthday and whatnot. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, and then I even had a couple of friends that, you know, just outdid themselves. I'm like, Lord, okay, I see you. You take some friends out my life and then you bring some friends in. <laughs> um, but actually, the one, some of the ones that I'm, I'm referring to actually have been in my life for a little while now. But, um, yeah, they, they decided to shower me with the gifts as well. So, man, greatly, greatly appreciate everybody. Um, I had some time to talk to my, my mom and my sister yesterday as well. Um... And yeah, I'm still looking forward to tomorrow, which will be my shenanigans, you know what I'm saying? Um, my mob boss shenanigans. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Like I said, I have no clue how many people is actually going to come that do lunch with me and then who's all going to the gun range. I don't know, because I, I was hearing that people were planning to come um, yesterday. So I was like, okay, well, um, we'll see. You know, whoever is there, they're going to be there. All I know is I'm going to... You know, I guess we dressed to the nines as a mob boss wife and, you know, the heavily hit woman. And I'm looking forward to um, having a good time. So anyway, that was my birthday. Let's get into this conversation, y'all. Sugar coated. Um, I would say today's inspiration, where did it come from? I guess just from the Lord. <laughs> um, I guess I ultimately just was thinking about... Um, I don't know if it had something to do with the time I woke up. I don't know. I can't remember now. I woke up around like 3.16, actually, which we know the famous John 3.16. Um, so I thought I was going to break that down. But um, even as I was doing that, I was like, mm. you know, well, one, the app wasn't working with chatholybible.com. So I don't know what's going on with that. But I was going to, you know, try to break down John 3.16 and see if there was other revelations to know from that particular verse. But um, yeah, didn't get a chance to do that. And then I felt led to rest a little longer as well. Um, 
So even though I was up early, I still just kind of rested and whatnot, went back to sleep, that type of thing. Um, yeah, I don't remember what got me to sugarcoating now, y'all. Um, so I just say the Lord. I can't remember now. <laughs> I, um, I usually tell y'all the details about how I get to certain topics, but yeah. Um, I think it was before I went to sleep. So it came to my mind, my heart and mind, before I went to sleep. Um, I started looking in, into it, like looking up verses and stuff like that. And then I went back to sleep. So now, like I said, I can't remember what led me to it. But ultimately, um, yeah, I guess I just wanted to go deeper. As I was going deeper and whatnot, I think it just was focused on this idea of sugarcoating. Um, I feel like this might be a problem of my own. Like, I think I have this problem. Um, but not so much that I don't know if it's something wrong with like making things sound better. Um, but I tend to like withhold information for people's feelings. Um, cause I get it. I've been on the receiving end of having someone critique, you know, every aspect of me. Um, and I never want to make nobody feel that way. Um, and everything like that. So I think that might play a part in why I quote unquote sugarcoat things. Um, or find, try to find the best way to say things, especially hard things. Um, but then I'm like, I mean, some people don't need the sugarcoating, right? Some people need the straight up truth, right? Um, so yeah, like, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. I think you have to find balance with this as a believer, right? Um, again, because yes, there's certain things we probably not necessarily should sugarcoat, but should definitely, again, uh, share the truth and love and things of that nature. But then... Um, there's people that, again, need the hard facts, you know, they need the hard truth. Um, so as I find balance with that this morning, um, let's get into this conversation. So if you're not familiar with the phrase sugarcoating or this word or two words, <laughs> then, uh, let me know, let you know what it means. So sugarcoating is slang to describe or talk about something in a way that makes it seem more acceptable or pleasant than it actually is. So there, there you go. That's the definition of sugarcoating, at least the um, urban diction dictionary version of it. And yeah, I think, I guess the word in my mind right now is palatable, right? You're making it more palatable for people to receive. And, uh, you know, again, I think there's an art, right, to it. I think that there is some level that God is calling us to, again, give the truth and love and things of that nature. But I think... The problem is either people could be like me, right, where you just don't say anything at all when something needs to be said, <laughs> or um, you could be the type of person that's like sugarcoating things to, in a way where um, it's like watering down the gospel and things of that nature, like not giving the full truth and things like that just to try to make somebody else feel better about whatever it is, you know, stuff like that. And so... Have you guys been there, man? Is, is this resonating at all? Like, is this something that you guys are familiar with? Like, has anyone ever sugarcoated you? Or have you been sugarcoating things to other people? Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about in, re in reference to this is, uh, you know, again, who is my God at the end of the day? Like, I can't, I guess, keep sugarcoating things in a way where I'm putting other people above God. Um so, for example, if the Lord wants me to give the truth and love or whatever the case may be, I can't keep, like, holding back um, and whatnot. And it doesn't help, right? It doesn't help to do that as well. Um, speaking of, I wrote down a couple of reasons why it doesn't help. And here's what I felt led to write down. So, one, um, it stunts our growth to, you know, I guess just keep being sugar-coated and things of that nature. Um I got examples in my heart of mind right now, but I, I might not share. Because, um, again, I, you know, I usually share my own life. I, I hesitate to share other people's life. But, um, you know, just know that it doesn't help you in the long run to have people sugarcoat things so much where you're like, um, I guess you become an enabler to people and things of that nature when you really should be someone that's like, you know, helping them to see the truth and things like that. And so, again, it can stunt our growth. Um, another thing is that we embed ourselves even deeper and become thoroughly surrounded with sin. So, yeah, I mean, the more things get sugarcoated, the more you think, oh, it's okay, and, you know, that type of thing, and that's not the truth. It's not okay. Like, at the end of the day, again, you have to take that hard look in the mirror sometimes and be honest with yourself. Like, can you at least be honest with yourself? Like, 
I know it can be difficult to be honest with pe other people sometimes, but can you at least be honest with yourself? I think, again, I told y'all all about that time in my life where I had to do that. And I had to look at myself and say, you know what, Miracle? The, the life you want and the things you want, you're not living accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you... You say you want love, you say you want marriage and all these different type of things, but then you're interacting with men in a certain way, you know what I'm saying, that isn't in alignment with marriage. Um, you know, you're you're accepting, you know, be certain behaviors. Like, there's just so much that I guess at that particular time that I had to be honest with myself about, right? Um, so, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm out here to remind and, and call you out, you know what I'm saying? If, if you need to start being honest with yourself, um then I hope and pray that you guys can, you know, take that hard look in the mirror and do that. Um, stop sugarcoating things so much where you're feeling like, you know, again, your actions are okay or whatever the case may be, because it, it's not, you know. Um, and it's not just about getting what you want, but you'll never be who God called you to be the longer you sugarcoat things and, and make it... Uh, <sighs> it's so difficult, too, because, again, God, he, he, he knows you, you know what I'm saying, because he made you, so... Um, on one hand, you know, even the things that we don't do, right, or even the time that it takes and all that type of stuff, he knows. And so uh, everything can still work together for good for those that love God. Um, so I'm not going to say that you'll never achieve, you know, or become who God has called you to be. Um, but at the same time, too, you just never know what you're delaying, right? Um, and then you never know when your time is up, right? So the more you sugarcoat things and brush things off, next thing you know, your life, your whole life has passed you by and you haven't done any of the things that God has called you to do. I mean, I hope nobody wants to experience that. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't. I mean, again, as I turned 38 yesterday, I, I couldn't help but sit here and think like, you know, I'm so grateful to be where I am today. You know what I'm saying? I'm so grateful um, that you know, 20 something year old miracle made the decisions that I did, you know, now was I doing everything perfect? Was I, you know, absolutely, you know, the best at everything? No, but I believe again, obedience, um, humbling myself and, and all those different things. And, and ultimately doing my best to follow God has gotten me to this point where I am today, where I'm very content, um, with whatever the Lord wants to do with me, for me and through me, you know? And like I said, it was a process to get here. Um, especially for me mentally, but I'm so grateful to be in this place now, you know? And so, like I said, I can't imagine where I would be if I was just, you know, I guess believing the lies, right? Believing like, oh, I got time or believing like, oh, you know, I don't have to do what God is telling me to do right now and, and that type of thing. Like, um, you know, again, I, I just feel like there's so many different things that plays a part. Because not only for you, but then it's like people that are attached to you, your circle of influence, you know, um, you are having an effect on those people as well. Now, hey, again, God can use anybody and he don't have to have the people come to you, X, Y, and Z, if you're delaying your, your blessings and stuff like that. But I don't know, I, like if you could really see your life played out and from the beginning and stuff like that, and you could really be aware of everything that is supposed to happen, then, I, you know, would you be a little bit more mindful right? Of the time that we waste. Um, that's the question I think today, um, along with this whole idea of sugarcoating, but let me go ahead and give me you some Bible. All right. So here are the verses that were standing out to me to share today. Second Timothy four and two says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Uh, we don't like this type of stuff, right? We don't like it when the pastor step on our toes with his message or whatever the case may be. Um, but a lot of times that's what we need, man. We need the, the men of God, right? Women of God to be out here sharing the truth and not like sugarcoating things so much that, again, um, I know Pat, um, Brother Mark, Marcus calls it like uh, being gummy bear preachers and things of that nature. Like, you know, we're going through life and all we're talking about prosperity, right? You're going... Uh, and you're only getting, you know, messages, you're getting milk over and over and over again. You're never growing from that. You need to get some meat at some point. You know, let's get those passes, you know, follow, you know, man, there's so much going on in this world, man. <laughs> um, and yeah, that was something on my heart and mind to just say just now. But I mean, you know, 
don't get me wrong, an inspiring word is always good and motivating. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, you know, oh, if your pastor is only, you know, teaching, you know, preaching inspiring things, that that's bad, quote unquote. But again, like, you know, is everyday life being addressed? You know what I'm saying? Are the things that we're actually going through being addressed? Like, that's why, you know, again, right before the pandemic, I was really, really seeking seeking the Lord for, like, content that was me. You know what I'm saying? I was like, where are the Elijahs and, um, you know, the disciples and whatnot of today? Like, where are those men of God or whatever that are speaking out here about what's actually going on in this world? And I was able to, again, I started following Marcus Rogers. He's one of the ones that was standing out to me. I know Greg Laurie, he was another one I was um, listening to at that particular time. And he talked a lot about, a, about you know, current events and, you know, um, end times things and things of that nature. I'm like, I need to hear messages like these. Like, I don't need, you know, constant over and over again telling me, oh, you know, you're going to make a lot of money. You're going to start a new job. Like, I mean, you might will do those things, but like, what is that going to benefit you when the very next day, you know what I mean? Like, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like. It's just so much going on in this world that it's it's way beyond just us needing to take in sugar-coated gummy bear messages. You know what I mean? Like, we don't need, you know, cotton candy all the time. Like, at, at the end of the day, you need to eat some meat and potatoes. Like, you know what I'm saying? You need to get a word that's actually going to, like, inspire change. You know what I mean? In you and then ultimately in your circle of influence and things of that nature. And so... Um, I think that's one of the big indicators of if you are truly being a believer, if you truly are following Christ, like there is going to be some type of change in you. It's not going to be over and over again. You're just uh, every year you're the same in the same place doing the same thing, at, you know, and stuff like that. There's going to be some type of growth and maturity or something like um, like I told you guys. I mean, I feel like I even look different the way I, from where I used to be look at things of that nature. Now, yeah, I know my hair plays a big part. I'm not sitting here trying to act like, ooh, I'm just so different. But what I'm saying is there's something different within me as well. Like, um, and there's some growth, you know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. And so, you know, again, I guess this is a call for any type of leadership. If you out here just only talking about gummy bear messages, you know, sugary, fluffy stuff, and you're not addressing the real issues, you're not addressing you know, uh, current events, you're not addressing, you know, uh, all the crazy things that are happening in this world, you're, you're doing a disservice to your flock, man, you know, and that's just my humble opinion, um, based on Bible, man, so, you know, take it or leave it, right, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys some more verses, <laughs> um, so, let's see, yeah, that's a quote that I came across this morning, it says, we do not do any good by sugarcoating the truth or watering down the gospel, I mean, I already said that, reiterated that, but let, let keep, let's keep that on our hearts and minds. Let that marinate today. That doesn't really do anyone any good or um, it's doing a disservice. Like, I can't lie, man. I think about some of the people that um, I've had issues with, like, being completely honest, like, being that bluntly honest. And again, I know it's a, it's a me thing because, like I said, with what I went through, I think a lot of stuff happens in my life that... Is spiritual warfare <laughs> to be honest and so i went through a situation where i told you guys all about it um but I, I i meant to make content about it so you guys can know exactly what all happened if i could remember it all now but basically i was in a uh, relationship like the one i was in before my um before i met my husband um that relationship that gentleman happened to nitpick and critique everything about me um i'm talking about my hair and my look everything he so he quote unquote loved me but everything needed to change about me apparently um in his mind and and that was a like hard thing to deal with and so i don't know if that plays a part because i think i've always been i guess quote unquote meek um but you know those type of things but um i think it does play a little bit of a part like in how i treat people because i want to make sure that i'm like i'm not hurting nobody's feelings or you know that type of thing and so there are situations where I'm in where I don't know if you would say I'm a mentor or something like that. And then I try my best to like tell the truth, but then ease into it, like not be so blunt and so like brutal with the honesty and whatnot. And then now I think back on those things and I'm like, man, maybe I'm just doing a disservice to people by doing that. Like maybe I need to tell them the truth. Yeah. Tell them the truth in love, but also just be completely honest about like, Hey man, you know, you got to make a change, man. Like, I don't, you know, or you got to like do something different or you got to, you know, maybe I need to be more blunt in that regard. Cause some people need that. 
Um, and if nobody else is doing that and it was up to me to do that, then I'm doing a disservice by sugarcoating. You know what I mean? So that's that's one of those things that I got to work through and whatnot. Uh, but let me give you guys some more Bible here. Um, so, again, I think, like I was telling, saying earlier, I think there's a, a healthy balance between what God is calling us to do and this idea of sugarcoating, right? Um, so, these are verses that were standing out to me that, that kind of gets on this this morning. So, Colossians 4, uh, 5 through 6, um, it says, Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So I guess instead of being sugary, we need to be salty. That's what I'm receiving this morning. Like, um, and, and there's, again, there's a, a, a fine art to, uh, again, sharing the truth in love, right? Um, it's not sugarcoating it. It's not trying to make it fluffy and make it like, oh, you know, it's okay, everything you're doing, you know, and stuff like that, and, and like basically lying to people. It's, again, being honest and saying, hey, the Bible says this or that. Um, and then maybe perhaps God is calling you towards this and that. You know, again, it depends on who you are uh, and who you're talking to and all that different type of stuff. Because um, it plays a part. And because I feel like that's another thing that really do plays a part in, like, how I talk to people. Because I'm like, who am I to this person? Like, if, if I'm your quote unquote mentor, right, or if I'm your uh, accountability coach or something like that, then yes, it's, I'm supposed to be, like, I'm in a position to be open and honest with you, right? I'm in a position to, um, you know, yeah, let's just leave it there. Be open and honest with you or whatever. But then, let's like, say, for example, I'm just some random Joe Schmo on the street or whatever, and you don't know me from Adam or something, and then you're like, and I come up and start telling you what you need to do in your life. Like, that's I get that that's a little bit like crash and brass. Now, unless the Lord is calling you, he done gave me a word and he telling me I, I got to tell you this or something like that, then okay, be obedient to the Lord or whatever. But I think, you know, a lot of times we have to ha be in some type of relationship with people to really truly um, you know, uh, lead and guide them. You know what I'm saying? And be that type of minister or, something, or the discipleship journey, you know? Um, I feel like you, you have to be a mentor of some sort. Like, they gotta be some type of counselor or something. Like, it's, you know, I think very rarely, and I don't know, because God, again, God could do whatever he want to do, but I, I don't know, that's just my humble opinion, that very rarely I think he would just send somebody random to you to, to speak a word and be like, you need to do this, or, or get down somebody's throat, or, you know what I mean, and that type of thing. So, again, I think I think it's a fine art, you know what I'm saying, we gotta, you know, find balance with it, telling the truth in love, not sugarcoating, not, not making it less than or more than it is but being honest and sticking to the word and things of that nature um shout out to miss ariel this morning she says this is spot on so to god be the glory man i'm glad that it's resonating with somebody today and that you know you're receiving it um yeah in either aspect whether you again it's something that you do or something people have been doing to you um i, I hope and pray that you know you can appreciate this conversation today but um so then let's talk about do, 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 Ephesians 4 and 15. It says, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way unto him who is the head into Christ. So again, I mean, Jesus is our example. At the end of the day, he told the truth in love. You know, um, he didn't like um, condemn people and things of that nature. I feel like we talked about that yesterday, right? No condemnation or whatever that day was that I talked about. Yeah, it was yesterday. Um, so obviously, let's use Jesus as our example, right? Um, he was honest with, you know, people, you know, he called them out, um, you know, there was rebuke happening, like all those things, like that first verse was telling us, we need to reprove, rebuke, rebuke, exhort, and, uh, with all long, long suffering and doctrine, right? And this is based on the word and things of that nature. And if you're doing that and, and sharing the truth in love and out of love, then, um, you know, there's no need or, you know, you don't have to worry about the sugar coating aspect of it. Um, so that's ultimately the juice this morning, y'all. I hope that again, this is encouraging and inspiring. Um, let me give you guys the Bible verse of today. And that's John one and one. It says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Friends, I hope y'all enjoyed this juice this morning. Thank you so much for listening to God, God sex, sex and love. love. Your daily dose of inspiration, the yes. juice. I pray you guys can go forth and have a wonderful day. And I look forward to talking to you all. Tomorrow, if the Lord's will, just a reminder, tonight, it is Friday, so we have a new episode of the GSL Talk Show coming out tonight. 
Um, it's with Yoel the Ben Band Israel. He is our guest tonight, and we can learn more about him and his endeavors. So check that out at 7 p.m. on the God, Sex, and Love GSL talk show, um, God, God, Sex, and Love YouTube channel. And it should be our um, main video on the GodSexAndLove.com website. But yeah, y'all have a great Friday, and I look forward to talking to y'all tomorrow if the Lord's will. Bye-bye. <laughs>